Welcome to a new series here on the channel we're calling A Closer Look. In this new ongoing series, we're going to take well, a closer look at what the garage has been working on in the previous episode of the RC Shop. A lot of you guys out there really enjoy, and actually most of you guys out there really enjoy kind of the, the goofs and gaffs that uh, Frank and I and the, the garage get into, but some of you not so much, and you'd really just rather kind of the meat and potatoes of what's going on. So in this series, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to cut out all the frills. We're just going to take a closer look at the work we actually did in the previous episode of the RC Shop. Now, the plan is for these episodes to come out the Wednesday following the Monday that the RC shop is, is aired. So in other words, the RC, the RC shop is going to air on Monday. Then the following Wednesday, there will be an episode of A Closer Look. This one's a little late this week. Actually, it's a lot late. It's actually the following week um, for two reasons. One, I've had to put some elements together for this series. And two, uh, the one camera that this channel has quit working. So I am actually now filming on a borrowed camera. Uh, I'm kind of hoping this is actually working and the mic's working and everything's working. I guess I'll find out when I go to edit. But the point being is these in the future will follow, be the Wednesday following. So you have an RC shop and then we'll take a closer look on the following Wednesday. And then the RC shop episodes are going to be actually every other Monday. So there'll be a, a should be an RC shop episode coming up this next Monday. Uh, and then typically on the Wednesday that there's not a closer look, we'll go ahead and continue doing the behind the scenes episodes. Hope that makes sense. But anyways, that's enough talk about this. Let's actually take a closer look. In the last episode of the RC shop, we built a V8 motor that's going to cover the 540 electric motor that's going into the Gremlin. I've gone ahead and put that back on the engine stand so we can take a closer look at it. We use green paint from Duplicolor to paint the engine block. It's the same paint we're gonna be using on the body. I wanted to make sure both the body and the engine block were color matched. Everything else on the motor was painted with uh, Tamiya paints, uh, except for the black wash, that's actually from Vallejo. Overall, it came together pretty well, but let's take a closer look at the individual parts, starting with the header wrap. We wrapped them with some first aid tape, and I did this for two reasons. One, it gives it a unique look that I think is pretty cool, but more importantly, too, it saved me a ton of time. I didn't have to prep the headers themselves. All I really had to prep were the flanges and the tips for paint. I cut the tape into long, thin strips and wrapped the headers carefully, and I used a toothpick to make sure it got stuck well into the crevices. I also had black wash that was still on my fingers, so I lightly smudged that across the tape to give it a little bit of a used look. For a final detail, we gave the inside of the tips a couple of coats of black wash. All in all, I think they turned out pretty well. I also used the black wash over the entire motor, and I advise doing this even if what you're building you want to look brand new. One, it's going to bring out the details for you, but two, once you drive that truck off the factory floor, it's going to start accumulating dirt and grime, and you want to represent that in your truck if you're trying to go for some realism. For the plug wires, I found some thin red wire in the beading section of my local craft store. I wanted to use wire so that I could bend them into a shape and they'd hold that shape. Now the only problem with this beading wire is it's very shiny. It's got a gloss coat on it and I don't want that for a plug wire. So the solution I came up with was to just give it coats of the black wash to knock back that shine. And I don't know if you noticed last episode, but these plug wires don't actually terminate anywhere. Well, not yet at least. We're going to be adding spark plugs for the plug wires to terminate too. And we're going to also be adding an oil filter. I've got one already, but we're going to have to cut it down to fit and match the curve of the block. The accessory belt is still a work in progress. I used some thin tubing I had laying around. In fact, this is the thin tubing uh, that I use for the welders that I sell over at the online store, but I really don't like how it comes together at the bottom and leaves a gap. So I think I'm gonna be switching this out for a thin rubber band, a black rubber band. I think that'll be much more scale looking and do the job better. And we're gonna take care of that before next episode. Speaking of the next episode of the RC Shop, we got a lot done last episode, but there's still a lot to be done. So what I talk about from this point forward, we're going to actually get done between episodes. And when you watch the next episode of the RC Shop, this stuff will actually be completed. Starting with the little details like nameplates and decals, these motors are covered with warning decals, uh, little VIN plates. Those things need to be taken care of. We also need to add fuel lines. So I gotta add some uh, fuel lines to these fuel rails. We're also gonna be adding wiring harnesses. So we'll need an engine harness. Uh, we'll need to wire up the alternator and all the accessories. So we got a lot of wiring we also have to do. 
We also have to run all the hosing, like the coolant hoses and the power steering hoses, but all this is gonna have to wait until the motor is actually installed, because I'll need to run all these hoses, wires, fuel lines, etc., either through the firewall or to a radiator. If you watched the last episode of the RC Shop, you know we ran into some issues with installing this motor. So what I've done is gone ahead and pulled the motor off the engine stand and installed the transmission plate so we can take a closer look at a few of these issues. The first issue is with the bracket that mounts the entire assembly between the frame rails. The bracket has holes that need to fit over the threads of the transplate, and with the motor installed, it just can't make it by about a millimeter. This will be very easy to fix. It's just a matter of removing some of the engine block right behind the oil pan. The other issue we ran into is the entire assembly is just too wide and the headers won't fit in between the shock towers. I think this is going to be an easier fix than I first thought and it will be just a matter of switching the spacers from the outside of the shock towers to between them and the frame rails. Should give enough space for the motor and I don't think any cutting will be needed. And like I mentioned previously, I'm going to take care of all of these issues before the next episode of the RC Shop. And what I'm going to be doing is documenting all that over at our Instagram account. So if you'd like to keep up with what's going on between episodes, make sure and give our Instagram account a follow. The deadline for the Gremlin build, or what we're calling the Grinch build, is coming up quick. So we've got to get back to work and I need to get back in the garage and get at it. But I hope you've enjoyed the first episode of this series. Uh, let me know what you think down below. And if you want to keep up with these builds, make sure and subscribe while you're down there also. Hey, leave me a comment and hit that like button. It really does help the channel and I'll see you next time. Later.